Welcome to this webinar series, which is all about the recently published UK guidelines for HIV PEP published in 2021. I'm Dr. Krisha Patel, and I'm a sexual offences examiner working in sexual assault referral centres. In this final video, I will go over the BASH guidance on a few cases that may come up in practice, including pregnancy and breastfeeding, sexual assault, and when somebody is taking pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrEP. Pregnancy and breastfeeding. Always do a pregnancy test before initiating medications such as PEP. Pregnancy and breastfeeding should not alter the decision to start PEP. We need to counsel the patient that PEP is unlicensed in pregnancy. And even though it is unlicensed in pregnancy, there is safety data on antiretroviral therapy available as many mothers who are HIV positive do take antiretroviral therapy during pregnancy to try to reduce the risk of transmission from mother to baby. And we should always discuss the risks and benefits of taking PEP during pregnancy with the patient. There's a specific part in the BASH guidance on sexual assault. And the BASH guidance says there is concern, though no published evidence, that transmission of HIV is likely to be increased as a result of any trauma following aggravated sexual intercourse, anal or vaginal. Clinicians may therefore consider recommending PEP more readily in such situations, particularly if the assailant is from a high prevalence group. If the assailant is from a low prevalence group in the UK, after the balance of risks and benefits are discussed with the patient, it is likely PEP provision will generally not be indicated. And finally, I wanted to talk about PrEP. PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis, and it is being prescribed more commonly now compared to just a few years ago. There's actually a specific section about PrEP in the new BASH guidelines, as it is increasingly being prescribed and commissioning of PrEP is changing. PrEP is a way of preventing people who are HIV negative from getting HIV infection by taking a pill containing anti-HIV or anti-retroviral medications. So if a person taking PrEP is exposed to HIV, the antiretroviral therapy drugs in the body can stop the virus from entering cells and replicating and therefore prevent HIV from establishing itself and therefore stopping the person from getting HIV infection. And PEP should not be considered or encouraged as a first line method of HIV prevention, of course, people should be using condoms to try to prevent not only HIV, but all of the STIs. PrEP is something that may be offered to those who are at higher risk of getting HIV, and that may be people who present for PEP frequently and are likely to have ongoing high risk behaviour. So they may be offered PrEP. And they should have a discussion with their sexual health provider about this. And other high risk groups that may be offered PrEP include men who have sex with men, people with partners from parts of the world where the rate of HIV is much higher, and people with a HIV positive partner where the partner has a detectable viral load and therefore that means HIV is transmissible. And as already mentioned, if a partner has HIV, but their viral load is undetectable, that means that the risks of transmitting HIV is much reduced and negligible. So there are different regimes, but one commonly used one is tenofovir and emtricitabine, which is also one of the medications used in the standard PEP regime. And PrEP, can be taken as a daily tablet or as an on-demand medication. And how the person takes PrEP depends on their circumstances and how often they have sex or unprotected sexual intercourse. So daily dosing may be more suitable for people who are at ongoing high risk of getting HIV, 
So they take the tablets daily, ideally at the same time every day, and that helps to keep the level of the drug steady in the blood. Whereas on demand, which is also called event-based dosing, may be more appropriate for people who are at risk of infection less frequently. For example, if they only have unprotected sexual intercourse once a month or less often. But that's not suitable for everyone, as the person really needs to plan taking the PrEP medication around when they choose to have sex. So the person needs to know when they're going to have sex and take the medication in advance of that for it to be effective. So this may not be suitable for many people, but it may be suitable for people who are worried about the side effects of taking daily PrEP. So a typical on-demand PrEP regime would be to take the medication at a certain period of time before having sex and then continuing for 48 hours after having sex. So I've added this diagram, which I've taken from an NHS leaflet on PrEP, and it helps to explain how on-demand PrEP is taken. And there may be different regimes, but this is one that is typically used. This regimen involves taking two tablets, two to 24 hours before condomless sex, followed by one tablet, 24 hours and 48 hours later. So the person who takes on-demand PrEP needs to know roughly what time they're going to have sex and they need to take two tablets of the medication before and that has to be two to 24 hours before and then they have to carry it on for 48 hours afterwards. If you have sex on several days in a row so that potential exposure is sustained over longer than 24 hours you need to continue taking a single dose every 24 hours until two days after your last sex. So let's say somebody's choosing to have sex on a Saturday night between two in the morning and one in the morning on Sunday. So they need to take the medication before they have sex, at least two to 24 hours before, and at that time they take two of their PrEP tablets then they carry on with taking medications for 48 hours after their last sexual intercourse has occurred. So when someone takes PrEP, do they need to take PEP? The answer to this is yes and no. So if the patient is taking their PrEP medication as prescribed, whether it's daily or on demand, and they follow the instructions given by the prescriber, then PrEP is effective. So similar to a woman who takes oral contraceptives daily as prescribed and has perfect compliance, the risk of pregnancy is very low, so she would not need to take emergency contraception after unprotected sexual intercourse. So if somebody takes PrEP as prescribed and their compliance is perfect, then they are well protected from HIV infection. However, if the person's compliance with PrEP is less than optimal, if they've missed any doses or frequently missed doses, or they're not taking it around the same time each day, then we need to consider PEP following any high risk exposure. And again, similar to oral contraceptives, if the woman's compliance is not very good and is suboptimal and she has an unprotected sexual intercourse, there is a greater risk of pregnancy, so she may need emergency contraception on top of her normal hormonal contraception. There is some specific guidance in the BASH guideline on when to offer PEP following a high risk exposure when somebody is already taking PrEP, but their compliance is not perfect. So if someone comes in and they say they are taking PrEP, it's really important to ask them about their compliance and whether they take it as prescribed and what their regimen actually is, whether it's daily dosing or the on-demand dosing. Thank you for listening to this final episode. If you found this episode useful, please check out the other videos in the series and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.